sometimes you need to build a system that will work for speakers of more than one language. Today we're going to talk about some common techniques to do this and their benefits and drawbacks in NLP for developers. Multilingual NLP systems are systems that are designed to handle more than one human language as input. And there are a couple of ways to do this. So option one is that you build a separate subsystem for each language you are interested in handling. And option two is that you have a single system that can handle input in multiple different languages or mixed languages. In general, option one will be significantly easier because you'll be able to use pre-built systems and components. For example, you may have an assistant where you have shared intents and dialogue policies between all of the languages, but the NLU is language specific and you have a separate NLU component for each of your input languages. Or you may have completely separate assistants with separate NLU and separate dialogue policies that share the same front end. So from a user standpoint, the experience is the same except for the language that they use, but from a back end standpoint, they're separate systems. Option two is a single system that can handle multiple languages. This can be particularly complex in situations where multiple languages are used together uh, in a very close way. So this is known as code switching, and you may have examples where, especially multilingual speakers who speak more than one language, uh, will use different languages in the same sentence or the same text, and your system will need to be able to handle both. So we have an ex example here of some Hindi English code switching where both languages are being used together. There are a couple of ways that you can approach handling code switch data. One is to train tools on a corpus of data that is code switched. So there are some available corpora, but depending on the particular languages that you are looking at and the particular uh, domain or topics that your users are going to be talking about, you may need to collect your own. Another approach is to use token level or word level language identification tools and then apply the appropriate tool for the specific language for the specific token. Uh, in addition, you can uh, annotate to an intermediate form that is shared between languages. So uh, some examples of these annotation forms are gold tags, which are more focused on sort of linguistic features, uh, or unimorph tags, which are designed to be a, an intermediate system that you can map multiple languages onto. And then once you have that intermediate representation, you can continue with the rest of your NLP pipeline. Multilingual systems are very important for situations where your system will be used by people who are speaking different languages. Uh, and a big benefit of this is that it can make interacting with conversational AI more natural and accessible, particularly if you are working with users who use code switching a lot. If your system can handle code switching in a very natural way for them, that's great accessibility. The biggest benefit is that if your system is multilingual, more people can use your system and people who may have a preference for one language over the other can choose their preferred language. In addition, because you're sharing some components between multiple languages, there's less to build and maintain. There are some drawbacks, however, specifically for code switching when two languages are being used together, it's generally harder to find data. This is a topic of some research in the NLP community, but it does not have as much focus as uh, working with one language at a time. In addition, if you have multiple subsystems, combining them can be a little bit tricky. You'll need to pick a specific architecture and um, communicating the, the specific organization of your different components can take you know, time and communication. And finally, particularly for language pairs like Hindi and English, where you have different scripts that are used together, uh, this can lead to some character encoding troubles, and it's really not trivial to handle multiple scripts at the same time. Just from a engineering perspective, it is easiest if the languages share a script. So for example, the Latin alphabet. Some common errors. A big one is that if you're using a um, approach that relies on accurate automated language identification, you are really likely to run into a lot of errors. Particularly for languages that are very close to each other, it can be very difficult for language identification programs to pick them apart. You also do need fluent speakers in each of the languages that you are supporting with your system in order to um, validate your system and also to work in the conversational driven development process because you need to have someone who can look at a conversation in a specific language or mix of languages and figure out what went well and what went wrong and annotate the data. 
the more resources that might be helpful. Uh, so we actually have a multilingual demo bot that's part of the community showcase that was built by Thomas Zizelu. Uh, so if you are looking for an example of one of these systems that you can work from, that's a good one to check out. And if you're looking for a good overview of different approaches that people use in NLP and leads on perhaps a data set that will be useful for you or a particular approach for part of your pipeline, this paper, Challenges of Computational Processing of Code Switching, is really excellent and covers a lot of the work that's already been done. I hope that this video helped you get a good understanding of some of the approaches that you might take as well as their benefits and drawbacks. Thanks for joining!